Allie here. Today, I want to talk a bit about what I have learned so far from martial arts. So what inspired this is yesterday I was at Muay Thai class at my gym that I have been going to for the past two years and I realized yesterday I realized that today is the two year anniversary of me signing up for the gym and trying Muay Thai for the first time. Um, and I know that at the time it was a very small little decision that ended up really changing my life and honestly i believe changing so many things for me like in inside of me as well as outside and so i felt a little nostalgic and emotional and like i just wanted to come on and, and share what a blessing it has been in my life to be a part of martial arts so if you did not watch the, the first ever video I posted about me and my story, I'll kind of paraphrase a little bit that when I first moved here, I was experiencing a lot of anxiety. Um, and what I mean by that, not anxiety like when you have anxiety about like a decision you're going to make or if you're going to get a promotion or like external things, but the kind of anxiety that you can feel is like inside and it's not coming from anywhere else. I don't know like clinically <laughs> how that's described or like, you know, what it is necessarily, but that's my way of describing it um, and, you know, the best way that, that I possibly can. Um, and I, I've dealt with that a lot throughout my life and I, I really believe that God healed that. Um, however, I was experiencing that a lot when I moved here and again, I, I do always point to God as, as my healer and my redeemer, but I know that God used the sport of martial arts to change my heart, to change so many things in my life and I am so grateful for that and it was a really big answered prayer um, because years earlier I had prayed that I could continue to be an athlete and continue to be competing before I even knew what MMA was or heard the word Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu. Um, and now fast forward, I'm like all in and I'm trying to be a fighter and I'm on here talking about it. And so um, I just wanted to share what a blessing it has been for me in my life. And I'm a really big believer that in order to you know have purpose and connect with other people it's really important to have passions and things that we're working for and i think that people say that to me all the time when i talk about my training they'll be like it's so cool that you have a set goal like it you know it must be so much easier to go to the gym and like to do these things and to stay motivated because you have an actual goal you have a fight coming up or whatever it is and it's absolutely true. And so I really encourage everyone um, to try to find a, a passion and a goal and, and something that they can work towards um, because I think it really helps us uh, to inspire other people around us, to connect with other people around us that have those common goals and can just work wonders inside. So enough of that. The, the things that martial arts has really taught me um, I just want to share the first three that came to my mind when I thought about this. And so the first one is that there is so much more inside of us than we realize. And I think for me, martial arts got me out of my comfort zone, um, caused me to be brave and courageous if I wanted to achieve anything in that sport. And I think that that's really the root of it and how I was able to figure out that there's like there's so much untapped potential that we have inside of us. I, I really think it stems from being put outside your comfort zone, not just like a little bit outside your comfort zone, but like way outside your comfort zone is when all of a sudden you have this light bulb that goes off that's like, oh my gosh, like there's so much inside of me. Like there's so much that my heart can do, my, my emotions can handle, my mental game, my physical game, um, all of that, when we get out of our comfort zone, I think it allows us to have those realizations. Uh, and martial arts did that for me, absolutely. I am, I am so grateful for it. Um, and I, I really mean everything from when you show up to a class like that for the first time, oh my goodness, it is so nerve wracking when you've never thrown a punch or a kick before and you have to walk into this gym and you know you might not have gloves you might not have anything and it's like that awkward moment where you've got to introduce yourself and tell the coach that you don't know what the heck you're doing um in my situation i i showed up to the gym for the first day with a friend and so that's made it a whole lot easier um but i know it's just it's really hard i remember the second time i went to my gym after i signed up for that membership um i wasn't with my friend 
and I was so nervous because I didn't know who they were gonna partner me up with because most things in Muay Thai, you have to do with a partner. And it's really scary. It's like, are they gonna put me with one of these really big guys? Are they gonna put me with this like really sweaty person? Like, is there gonna be another girl there? I was always so nervous that there was gonna be another girl there. Um, and now, oh my goodness, I would never even think of stuff like that. Um, because once you get outside your comfort zone, all of a sudden those things become comfortable and then you want more and you push yourself harder and go further and further and so um, it really got me out of my comfort zone in that respect um, or even physically so I was a hockey player and I've always had really bad um, hip mobility and so the thought that I would be able to kick like do roundhouse kicks and like push my hips through was like I didn't know that was possible and I think my dad even told me when I first started and I was going to do a, a tournament um, I didn't do a tournament until like a, I didn't start the gym like intending to compete or anything I just did some cardio and then after like six or eight months I decided I wanted to compete and I think it was then my dad said to me like why are you in kickboxing like why don't you maybe just try to do like would your coaches let you do like a boxing tournament or something like I think he thought like like physically that seems so much more feasible just to box like just use your hands and there's all kinds of reasons like why I won't do boxing and that's not really my thing um but my point in sharing that story is it's just it's intimidating to be like oh I have to try to kick somebody in the head I've never kicked anything in my life I can't even kick a soccer ball um and now I have to try to learn Muay Thai with kicks and knees um but now I watch you know videos of myself and it's like I can't even believe it um because honestly other people believed in me and I started to believe in myself once I, once I saw a little bit of growth and there's just so much more inside than you think that you can do um and I would say that as far as competing as well like I can't even describe like it is so so very scary um to step into a cage by yourself or on a mat by yourself like the nerves that you feel in those situations are at least for me bigger than anything I ever felt in, in ice hockey or golf or anything like it's a different type of nerves um, and I remember before the first time I ever competed thinking like having to visualize so much because I didn't even know if I could do it like punch another person or have them punch me um, but I learned that there is much much more inside than I realized and I've watched that inspire other people around me and that's why I want to keep going and keep doing it and, and keep learning and so there's just there's so much more inside than we realize. The second thing that I thought of when I was thinking about what I have learned so far from martial arts is that it is a marathon. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon and we have to set our own pace and the reason I phrase it that way is I think sometimes People use that phrase a lot. It's a marathon, not a sprint, whether it's your career, your life, whatever it is. And I think sometimes people use that, can use it as an excuse to, to go slower, to not give it their all, to not work hard. And that's not what I mean at all. And that's why I say it is a marathon and you set your own pace. Because no matter what I do, there is constantly people around me telling me to go faster or go slower. The reality is I know I'm in this for life I don't know if I'll be competing for life I won't be competing for life but I am in the journey of you know health and, and fitness and learning all these things for life I know what my goals are I know where I'm going and just God's giving me you know that one step ahead of me all the time that one little way up to my feet all the time I know where I'm going and what pace I can take those little steps at nobody else does and they will constantly try to try to speak into that um i found that being someone that pushes really hard knows that i can push myself really hard other people see that and they think that i'm being too hard on myself or oh that sounds miserable like for example if i describe that um the how late i'm at the gym every night or how early i get up and and lift or um i think i get it a lot if i'm invited to like a happy hour or something and and i'm like oh i'm going to the gym and people see that as like oh you have to go to the gym like it's a negative thing or you'll be missing out on this social activity or this vacation or whatever it is because i'm training all the time to me it's the opposite if i go do x y and z and I'm skipping training, I'm missing out on training. I would rather be at the gym. 
I want to train for hours every day, right? Like that's my pace and no one can tell me to slow down. I'm not going to, I know when I need to slow down and I know the social events that I can attend and, and that I will attend in those moments where I need to take a step back um, and you know, spend time with people and, and not be training. Um, I try to make it to my church happy hours once a month, like stuff like that are like really like dear to my heart. Um, but other people sometimes like, they don't understand your pace. Like they try to make you go slower. And there's also people that'll try to make you go faster. So in this sport, um, it's very important to be patient. I'm learning from my coaches. It's very important to be patient. If it was just me, I'd be like fighting every weekend. Or if I had the wrong person speaking into my life and my career, I'd be like just all the time fighting. That's not good either. Um, so it is important to, to have people around you that you can listen to and are really a close part of your journey and they're in your inner circle um, and you can listen to and they can help pace you. But there might be other people out there too who are pushing you to like, take a fight when you're not ready or ask you why you're not fighting or ask this or that and um, you don't have to answer to that I'm saying I don't have to answer to that and I think that with a lot of things in life like we just have to make sure to always be talking to our own bodies and setting our own pace because only we know what's going inside here and here that that's it nobody else knows that and so nobody else can tell you when to stop and go. And again, I always acknowledge like there's so many people in your life that can speak in and can help you make those decisions, but it's important to be very intentional about who is actually speaking in and, and giving you advice and affecting that pace that you're setting. And one thing I mentioned is your inner circle. Um, and something that I've learned is it's good to even write on a piece of paper, like who those people are um, who are part of like your inner circle like if you had a little house like who's actually inside the house with you and who's more like outside in the yard and then who's more like an onlooker like they're more like an acquaintance like they shouldn't be giving you advice on stuff it's it's really important to identify those people for your life or even just specifically for a sport or a career i think we have different circles of people um but that's something that's really important um to know listen to yourself your body your heart your mind and god and understand what your pace is every day um you know for the month for the year and also making sure that the wrong people aren't speaking in and affecting that a lot this next one that i'm going to share is actually very similar to the last one so it's a nice transition and it's that the people that i surround myself with make all of the difference and the reason that i learned this of course i've learned it in other avenues right but i really learned this in martial arts I think it's because of the time in my life and also because again it goes back to being out of your comfort zone and trying something new and making a lot of new friendships and realizing that if you have a very set goal and you want to work hard you have to surround yourself with the right people and I've seen that day in and day out my training is impacted all the time by who I'm with by my training partners by my coaches and it's so important to choose wisely and surround yourself with people and let those people in um, that are really going to like help just push you forward and excel your journey um, and not pull you back. And it goes for as obviously in sports and your performance, but also just as a person. And um, at church, um, our pastor has this, this funny way of saying, um, you can't soar with eagles if you run with the turkeys. Um, so that's one way of saying it. I know um, one of my best friends and I also always say, I don't know where we came up with this, but lions walk with lions. Like we say that to each other because you want to be surrounded by lions and, and eagles and just people that are going to like lift you up and help you soar. And I've really seen that the last couple of years because I really feel that God's blessed me meet, meeting so many really amazing people in this sport and I know that I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be talking about this, um, I wouldn't be making a YouTube channel, <laughs> definitely not, if I didn't have people that were encouraging me. Um, and it's really important, like when you find those key friendships and those people who are gonna give you new ideas and, and push you forward, to keep them very close and give those friends time, um, give those teammates time. Like 
whoever it is in your life um, to really make sure that you put effort into those relationships and that you know you get you get in what you put out so um, your coaches are gonna realize with any sport and I, I've seen it too like people notice if you're there working hard if you're consistent and then they're going to pour into you because they want to because they see potential like you know coaches are there sometimes because it's their job but at the same time like they're going to give extra attention to the people that are working hard and, and who have goals and who are going to help them in their life too right so it's just really important um, to work hard and to identify those people that can help move you forward and they'll be with you all the way to achieve your goals so those are my three things that i've learned so far and there are so many, there are so many things I've learned from martial arts, but if you've watched this video, I would say my biggest encouragement is really to get out of your comfort zone, try something new, surround yourself with good people. It doesn't just go um, for one sport or sports in general, but just really in life. Um, these, these concepts are really important and I know that I learned them all uh, through this sport the last couple of years and I've seen myself grow as a person in confidence um, and I've seen the outcome of that is to inspire other people, which is always my goal at the end of the day. So I hope this helped you. Um, if you're listening, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time.